Hello everybody out YouTube, this is Michael the Geek for Life with another review of a model from the Star Trek Starships collection from Eagle Moss. This is issue number 8 and it is the USS Excelsior from Star Trek 3 and 6 and an episode of Voyager. This is the actual USS Excelsior, not just Excelsior class, so those as far as I know are the only appearances that that ship ever made. And without further ado, we have the model. I'm going to go ahead and take it off the stand. Um, unlike the first few from this set, the this most recent series seemed to just not hold well to the stand. They're not like falling off every time you touch it or anything. You can still move it around the shelf. But um, like in my first few videos, if you saw those, like I was turning it up and like the ship wasn't falling out. This one, it will. Actually, the past few would. And um, so it's just, it happens sometimes. Like I said in my last video, it, you know, they had to work with what they had as far as like the ship design and trying to figure out a way to connect it to a base. So, I mean, it's unfortunate that they couldn't do a little bit better with some of these, but I'm not complaining too much. A little bit, just not too much. USS Excelsior, NCC 2000. I'm going to hit, whoop, move the camera. There we go. So, as far as the model itself, you can see there, they got a lot of the detailing on the saucer section. Uh, the translucent plastic they got for the warp nacelles, you can kind of see, well not kind of, you can see where they bonded it to the nacelle there, which I'm not a big fan of. I wish they had found a way to hide that a little bit better. This is the first one that I've seen where they weren't able to really conceal how they connected the plastic to the metal. Uh, most of the ship is metal. You know, the saucer. Um, it is a little bit fragile with these warp nacelles. Um, they do tend to bend a little bit easy. Of course, these aren't toys. They're meant to be looked at, so I shouldn't even be doing that. But, um, yeah, the warp nacelles do seem to be a little bit uneasy. Um, not uneasy, but flexible, I guess might be the word. And they really shouldn't be. Sorry, my cats are at it again. Hey! There they go. They're fine. Uh, you see a side profile there. Underneath. Let's see. Uh, nope, the deflector dish is just painted in there, so it's not translucent plastic or anything. So it looks like just the warp nacelles. Everything else is painted on detail. Uh, let's see. Not too much to say about it. I've uh, never been one of my favorite ships. I mean, it was just sort of there. It was like a standard Federation ship that we would see every now and then. It never really came across as overly powerful, like I guess it was supposed to in the Star Trek movies. I guess compared to the Constitution classes, it was. But I mostly saw it in the next generation. Of course, next to those ships, it just didn't really compare. It was just sort of a standard ship in the Federation. So that was the Excelsior, as far as the model itself. Flip it upside down, why not? Put it off to the side. And as with every video, it's a magazine. A nice profile shot of it there. Well, not profile. It's a nice beauty shot, really. And we open it up. As with all the magazines, shows you how to attach it to the base and some of its stats. And this ship could only go warp nine. The, the last ship we looked at, the Katinga, that one could go like, I think it was 9-6 or something like that. So I guess the Klingons had the Federation beaten warp drive for a while, maybe. Yeah. Nice little beauty shot of it. It is a nice looking ship when you get it on screen like that. Maybe it's just more impressive on screen than it is as a model. Some of its appearances, mostly from movies. Yep, mostly movies, except for that one Voyager episode. Uh, again, some appearances from movies. Different views, top, side, front, and back. And designing the Excelsior. That was a process I hear. 
I haven't actually read this magazine. I don't really read too many of the magazines, but I do remember hearing something from some special that it was um, a contest people entered to design the next ship, and I forget who won. It was like a Japanese student or something put in this design, the Excelsior design. And so that's how that came to be. And some of the some of the possibilities. You know, given that those were the possibilities, I'm glad they went with the one they did. Uh, studio models of the Excelsior. And on screen appearances. And of course our next issue, the Defiant number nine. Issue number nine, that is. And a nice little beauty or profile shot from above. So as far as my rating for the ship, I'm going to have to give this a three out of five. It's just sort of an average model for me. Um, I mean, the, it kind of bothers me, the warp nacelles, not just that you see where the plastic connects to the metal, but also just how fragile they are. I'm not sure if there was really much they could do about that or not, but I mean, that for me... It feels like it's more fragile than it should be. It's even more, fra it feels more fragile than the Katinga with that long neck. Um, so that's not too good. And if it's going to be fragile like that, I'd like it to hold better to the base than it is. Um, I feel like this was one of the ships where they probably could have gotten it to hold better. Um, the paint job and everything on it, it's good. The detailing's great. The overall design is great. It's just like it is in the movies. But it's just a few of those little issues, mostly with the warp nacelles that kind of bother me a little bit too much. So it's a three out of five for this one. And that'll wrap it up for this one, uh, this review. Issue number seven of the Eagle Moss Star Trek Starships collection, the USS Excelsior, rating three out of five, average. If you like what you see here, feel free to subscribe, hit the like button, leave a comment, I'll try to get back to you. And uh, one way to support this channel, or for that matter, any channel that you happen to like, um, financially without having to actually spend any money of your own is those little ads at the beginning if you could watch those all the way through or if you see a little banner ad at the bottom of the video go ahead and click that you don't have to buy anything you just click the ad and it opens up a page and then you just X out of it it's a nice way to send a little bit of money to the YouTube channels that you support without having to um, spend any of your own so I guess that'll do it for now thanks for watching and you'll see me in the next video have a good one